Let's go. Just got done doing a three hour live stream. I don't really have much of a voice, uh, but we will do our best. Okay, so we got this run, and this is after the Kayshawn Butte touchdown was called back for some version of a penalty. Anyway, we move on here to second down. Good first down run that right there from TDP, our second down run. So now it is third and goal. And the reason why I, I really want to start here is because Max Johnson's biggest struggles last season in his two starts, in particular against Ole Miss, was in the red zone. And what you're going to see here on this third down, uh, well, it's actually on fourth down, uh, he misses uh, a few throws. Now, uh, I've been teasing this for a while, and we're going to get to it at some point, but uh, Max Johnson really struggled in the red zone versus Ole Miss. And that wasn't the case against Florida. In this end zone in particular, Max Johnson forced an interception to Kayshawn. And what happens with Max's game sometimes is he'll lock in on Kayshawn, which makes a lot of sense. He's arguably the best player on the team. You know, he had an incredible spring game. And you'll see a play in just a moment. Kayshawn's football IQ is through the roof. Uh, but, you know, this is a part of the field that Max really struggled with uh, against Ole Miss. In fact, uh, by my tally, he cost the team 13 points in the red zone extended and look, he was overall good against Ole Miss. He was incredible against Florida. And it's either him or Miles. And you'll see that throughout the film study. Um, but, you know, if you want to nick or if you want to pick on one little part of, of Max's game, it's this. Now, on this play, nobody was open. So this was actually a smart move to try and tuck it and run for a first down, which obviously, you know, would he have made it in an actual game there? I'm not sure because you can't really hit. But this is the play, um, and it's ironic because in the Zen zone well, as well against Ole Miss, LSU was really aggressive on fourth down, including a fourth and three that ended up being a touchdown. So what you're going to see here, and Jake Peets is going to go uh, through this with Max Johnson, but this is a bad, bad, bad miss on fourth and three because this cost us six or seven points because he makes the wrong read here so you know if you're a left-handed quarterback the natural inclination is to you know throw the ball to the left especially with Kayshawn here so what's going to happen here pre-snap what I'm going to do is I'm going to play this play at full speed and I'm going to let you because I know spring game it's hard to remember things and that's just a great play by Dwight McLaughlin we don't have the all 22, so you can't really see what I'm going to show you here. But this is not Max's finest moment here. So one thing about the 2019 LSU offense, we actually got to go back to here. Okay, so what did the 2019 LSU offense do that really stood out? Well, they ran a lot of five wide receiver sets, which is something TJ, uh, TJ Tom Luganbill mentioned over and over and I know Tom we did a he used to do a bunch of radio segments with me but Tom is just so good at this uh and he kept pointing out that the 2019 offense was really good at five wide receiver sets but one thing they did a really good job of is pre-snap motions to make the defense declare what they're doing so by this little motion here what that tells Max Johnson is he's not looking this way but if you look if he looked this way pre-snap. You notice that these two guys switch, a linebacker and a wide receiver. So that tells the quarterback pre-snap that this is man coverage. So if there's man coverage here and the safety is over here, guess what? The space to the back of this end zone is going to be wide open on this play. Because what you're going to see here, and I'm going to run it at full speed one, one more time. Now, did you notice what happened at the top of the screen? Okay, so we brought this up, and this is the exact play. In fact, this is the exact play that T.J. Finley got his first touchdown on against South Carolina, and it's a staple of the LSU offense, and a lot of teams do this. This is essentially a pick play, and if you're pre-snap, who's the one defensive back you want to attack? Well, it's the guy that struggled the most out of anyone else on this field. That is Cordell Flott, who is right here in the slot. And he's going up against Coy Moore here. So what you're going to see, 
Uh, oh, cool. I just got a cash app from Justin. Thank you, Justin. Justin Freer. I appreciate that. Uh, and this is way after the live stream ended. I appreciate you, Justin. Um, but what you're going to see here is this pick play. And John Trey's normally the guy that's setting this pick. Uh, and we pointed this out in the practice, spring practice footage. And if you want to see our spring practice footage film breakdown, you can find the link down there. So what John Trey's doing is setting a pick right here. And one thing Derek Stingley and Cordell Flott, and they're close friends, they really struggled passing off receivers, okay? So, pick plays are perfect against man coverage with no safety over the top, which is exactly what the pre-snap read showed. The safety help is over Kayshawn to the near side of the field, so you know throwing the football here, yes, it's fourth down, and yes, you're throwing the football to your best player, which is something that you can live with, but the throw here is to this side of the formation. But notice Max locks in. The protection is absolutely perfect, and he locks in and forces his football this way, but notice what's happening here. All these receivers are doing their job. Kayshawn screens and picks Cordell Flott, who was guarding uh, Coy Moore. Derek Singley's late to react. Jordan Tolles is in man coverage, and he's running with Cole Taylor, who is also there to pick Sting. And all Max Johnson has to do is float this football to the back of the end zone and let Coy Moore run underneath it, and you'll see it's an easy touchdown. It's kind of hard to see. And Derek actually did a good job, actually, you know, and looking at this again, I, I can't really see this angle. Uh, Derek actually does a good job reading this a little bit better than what I initially thought. But still, the throw is to Coy throwing this way, or you can back shoulder it if you want to be really safe. But instead, we throw this football into a really tight space, and this is something Max did against Ole Miss, and it worked throwing the football to Kayshawn over and over again if things don't go the way that you want them to. And he locked on and forced his football to Kayshawn. The accuracy accuracy of the ball wasn't bad because it was only to where Kayshawn could catch it. Dwight McLaughlin makes a good play. But the first bit of criticism here is on uh, Devonta Lee. And, I, you know, I say criticism. I say it lightly. I want all these guys to succeed. I'm a diehard LSU football fan. We were told Devonta Lee was having a, a special spring. We should like this matchup here on first down. Analytically, it's, uh, it was proven that teams that throw on first down, it's a far better play, um, especially when you're playing with the running back that's a linebacker, okay? Uh, so he, this is legit a linebacker. So we, we have to throw the football here. It's first down, three wide receivers to the top of the formation, and we got man coverage here against uh, Ray Darius Jones. We need separation, Devonta Lee, not the best route here. Okay. No separation whatsoever. And the ball here from TJ is not that bad. It's only where Devonta could catch it, but because there's no separation, uh, it's a good play. Go to second down. Good throw. And you'll see an end zone camera angle of this. Uh, and by the way, I'm watching this for the first time. I just remember the end zone camera angle of this. Uh, this is my first rewatch of the game. And this is just good by TJ. This drag route from Alex Adams. Linebacker decides to pick this up. If the linebacker sinks too far, you throw this to Alex. But he throws his football right over the top. You couldn't throw that football any better. Good tackle. I think that's Xavier Fountain on there. So lots of backups here. Philip Webb at DN. Good seeing him get some snaps here. Once again, this is a linebacker. Good job. This double team from Bradford and Dummerville. Backup offensive line unit, and you'll see throughout this study. Really struggled. This is a good job. They they blow Jacoby and Guillory out of here. And good job at Dummerville. This is really good stuff here, and Guillory does a good job with the late react, uh, or these defensive tackles in here do a good job, and look, that's good push. That's good stuff. That's what we want. That's good stuff from James Craig coaching these guys up. 
Let's see what happens here on second and six. So we get four yards on first, not bad. I just praise the offensive line. Jaqueline Roy had a really good day. He had a really good day. And this is him just tearing Marlon Martinez up. Ah, uh, let's see. Could TJ have sidestepped this and stepped up? Maybe? But you got to throw this football quick. And Desmond Little actually is the one that makes the play. And it would have been a completion. More than likely. So good push from this backup defensive line. So now Mason Smith's in the game here. Let's see how big Mace does now. Going up against that same Marlon Martinez. All right. It's third and six. All right. I'm going I'm to show you something after this. Good play from Darren Evans. No separation from Alex Adams. So, yes, TJ was not the best quarterback. In fact, he was arguably the worst quarterback out of the ones that played. But, he, you know, these backup receivers did not get much separation. Once again, you're going up against a defense that's seen you plenty of times. They know your moves. They know where you're going. So, you know, some defending. But the one takeaway I want you to see here, and this is something LSU did not do a lot of, which makes a lot of sense because this is a linebacker. This is called chipping, or some people call it JoJoing. You know, there's different football terminologies for different things. But this is something... LSU can do to help out, especially if Miles Brennan is, is your quarterback because he's not mobile. How about your pass protection by chipping? Um, and, you know, Austin Deculus didn't get many chips. You chip him, and that helps out your offense tackle here. Mason Smith gets good push, good reset here for Marlon Martinez. No separation, good play by Darren Evans, and it's a punt. Let's keep. All right. I hate to say this play is on Demon Clark, and I hate it. You know, we want Demon Clark. He, he was given the number 18 uniform for a reason. So Demon Clark's an interesting guy, and in Dave Miranda's defense in 2019, he was very effective as a situational pass rusher who could drop into coverage or bull rush. He's obviously really strong. In a normal 3-4, what you would see is this defensive end would actually be playing a 4-I, this tackle would be over the center, and this defense tackle would be in a 4-I, and then we'd have a standing uh, Kayleigh Vaughn chase on in to the strong side of the formation, which is where the tight end is, and that's where he is right here. But in a 4-3, it opens up this backside B gap, which is a gap that LSU just could not stop. Missouri pounded it, Alabama pounded it, and so on and so on. And the reason why it was so tough is because we struggled to fight over trash and filling this B gap. But what you're going to see here is Neil Farrell does not do a bad job of sitting in this gap. He doesn't do the best job, but it's not the bad, the, the worst job. And notice Chase and Hines and, and, and Austin Deculus are just pounding uh, the backside defensive tackle here. And Ty Davis Price does a good job using his eyes and then planning and hitting this B gap. And we, we did a spring... Uh, practice footage breakdown of this exact drill that Blake Baker's been doing to try and fix this. And if you're Demon Clark, you've got to feel this out. You have to see that this gap is wide open, but instead, and you got to peek, you got to do something. Instead, you know, he just sits, gets caught, and, you know, there's a uh, Brody Miller did a good piece, said Demon Clark plays with a lot of anxiety, he second guesses himself. You have to process this information a lot faster. And I love DeMond Clark. I'm not making fun of his, you know, I, I'm not. I don't want anyone to, to to take it as that. But this is exactly what the LSU running game struggled with. And that's why we had so many explosive plays, because we couldn't uh, couldn't defend gaps. Now, a lot of you would say, well, why is B.J. Ojolari all the way out here? Well, yes, he gave up a lot of ground, but you got to set this edge. And he does. So... This is just bad defensive ex execution from the front seven. And this is what we saw a lot of Bo Pelini. Now, this got better as the game goes on. And we're going to show you in just a second how um, Durante Jones fixed this in a in a run just a second. But this is just, this is not good uh, for the defense. So now, uh, you know, we this is Jay Ward versus Ty Davis Price. 
we need Jay Ward to make this play. Okay? And he does. Good job from Jay Ward. Stopping TDP. But that that's just bad. It's really bad. It, it's got to get fixed. And it got better as the game went on. So, it's first and ten. Let's see what happens here. It's incomplete. And one thing I liked about Max Johnson is that he worked backside. That's not where the play was initially going. I got to text Haley to bring me a glass of water. I'm losing my voice and I'm not editing this video. Ah! And I want, I want, I want you to watch this play. All right. So this is something I love. So, where where was the play made? It was actually made by Sony Fanua. Good. Hey, he's bringing me water. You can see her. <laughs> so, all right. This is called stemming. All right? If you're a former defensive lineman, you know what this term means. So what a stem does is it changes your defensive front. And what Durante Jones actually does here is he actually flips this into kind of a 3-4 philosophy. And this is the Arandian philosophy of controlling the B-gaps. So two plays ago, Durante Jones saw that the B-gap was pummeled. Now... I don't know if Durante Jones was on the sideline or in the booth. I'm guessing that's him right there on the sideline. I wasn't really able to see. Uh, but what he does here is he stems this defensive line. Andre Carter stems this defensive line. So when you stem this defensive line, it changes the gap integrity. It changes who the offensive line has to block in this situation. And thank you so much. I appreciate that, baby. <laughs> she said, <laughs> "She said, did he not think he would get thirsty? I'm not doing any edits. I'm just slapping this on. Um, so you notice the stems. So essentially, we get in a 3-4 look, right? Sony Fanua becomes a defensive tackle. Joseph Evans is now your head up nose. And Neil Farrell. And what Durante Jones is doing is he is guessing that they're going to run on second down. And he said, we are not going to give up big explosive runs through our B-gaps again. And notice how this changes the entire play. So the offense spreads this out. And the reason why the offense decides to spread this out, Jake Peets, is so he can generate more space for the running back to go outside. This is just good tick-for-tack stuff right here. Sony Fanua holds this B-gap. So now... We're in conflict. That's the t that's the the buzzword now with defensive coordinators. So, Demond Clark is deciding if Max Johnson is going to pull and throw to Coy Moore. Once he sees that he doesn't, he does a good job. Maybe attack a little harder downfield. So did Fanua, even though he gets blown up, we don't give up that B gap, right? And and a good tackle here from Clark. So that is a positive run. But notice it wasn't a 20, 30, 40 yard run like we had earlier. So it, it's it's just good stuff. And I want to see the defensive line stem more next season, which essentially is uh, a defensive end stemming inside is pre snap, you know, rotating your front. You saw that. they. It's kind of like a bear crawl uh, to the interior, which is very interesting. So now it's third and three. And yes, it was a seven yard gain, but it's better than a 20 yard gain. And this is such a well designed play from Jake Pete. So this is what happens. And this is one of Kayshawn's better plays, even though he didn't catch it. So if the defense is playing off like this, the flats are going to be there, right? So what Kayshawn essentially does is. He screens this guy. It's kind of a pick. And Jared Small sees that his tight end is going to the flats. And Kayshawn slowly changes Jared Small's path. 
and he's late to get out in coverage. Max does a good job throwing a very catchable ball to the backup tight end, Nick Storrs. Notice he doesn't lead him too far and doesn't throw it behind him. You want to hit guys that aren't your normal best receivers just in the numbers like that. Gets Nick Storrs in stride, and we pick up a first down. Really good stuff there from Kayshawn. It's the little things. Kayshawn's got really high football IQ for a true sophomore. It's good stuff from Kayshawn. I'm telling you, you might get that 7 jersey as a sophomore, which would be crazy. Good job, Max. And this is good. Coy Moore not creating separation. And he's trying to get it to him. Right there. Nowhere to go. Good bull rush here from De uh, Evans. And it's just better. It's really good defense. That is sound defense. Good stuff. This was a really good day from Durante, even though we still didn't get to see his blitz package. So we do the same thing. Notice it's the same exact thing. So what Durante is doing, he is making a conscious decision saying, look, if we want to play four down linemen, that's fine, but we cannot give up B-gaps. So you notice the same thing on the last drive in second and 10. We did it again. This was something we did not do a good job of last year, or we didn't do it at all. He stems the defensive end to the inside, and essentially this is a 3-4 principle. Defensive tackle, who's actually defensive end playing the B-gap. Darren Evans, you know, kind of playing a head-up nose, more over this guy. But we're essentially covering the B-gaps and the A-gaps with these three guys. Okay? Now let's see what happens here on 2nd and 10. And now we stem this guy all the way in. So we are protecting... All these interior gaps. And you see? We stop it. You see how much diff how much more difficult it is? We know that they're running to the inside. And when you have all these guys inside, it also makes it tougher to pull. So notice, even though we even though Ed Ingram gets the kick out here, because there's just so much trash on the inside. We're able to pick this up, and there's no offensive lineman that can get to the tackler here. Once again, DeMond Clark maybe could have done a better job of filling right here. Chase and Hines misses his block uh, here on the backside as he tried to work his way up. Ah, uh, that's a bad miss by Jason. It's a bad miss. It's a hard block, so we need we 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 just need to get play side of this guy right here, and just and we got to do a better job of tackling here. Gave up too much positive yardage right there, and that's a good run by TDP. Considering everything that actually happened on that play, that was really good stuff. So now it's third and 16. Mm. All right, so... This is something I would like to see LSU do differently. So, uh, let's see. So, it's third and 16, and what does LSU decide to do offensively? Well, once again, I don't have the all 22, which makes it hard to determine routes. But on third and 16, LSU decides to run all verticals, okay? So, what does that mean? Everybody's running a go, all right? Good stuff here. So this is something Andre Carter probably saw on film and he wanted to change. So, yes, we don't get really good pressure, but notice we maintain rush lane discipline. So what we don't want to happen is when they're running all verts like that, that opens up all the space in the field. And notice Joseph Evans does a good job squeezing down, getting good extension, and we don't want Max Johnson to get a run because, you know, there's all this pay dirt here. And notice he squeezes this, and then he works his way over to hold this gap, and then he gets pressure. That is really good stuff from these two defensive tackles. And this is just better coaching compared to the defensive line from last season. Look at the pass rush lane discipline here. This is good stuff. This is by far Joseph Evans' best play of the day. Really good stuff here. And 
you know, it's all verts. Max just has to kind of fling it up there. So, what's the thing about all verts? What I would like to see LSU do differently is instead of just trying to get all 16 yards here, let's have at least one underneath route where we can make this, even though, you know, Cade York's the best kicker in the country, let's make this a more reasonable fourth down. Because if we throw at least one ball underneath, maybe the receiver can get it and make it a fourth and one, fourth and two, fourth and three, and maybe we go for it, or he could just get the first down. But running all verts here when they're playing soft zone is just not going to work. Uh, decent protection, but just better job by the LSU uh, defensive line maintaining that rush discipline, that rush lane discipline, something that they could not fix last season. Cade York, nice kick. So I mentioned this in the um, in the post game live stream. It's great that John Trey Kirkland had the game that he did. However, this is not. This was a perfect John Trey Kirkland game. So I've shared this before about John Trey is that he has extremely high football IQ. Extremely high. He does a little things well. Uh, but what makes this game very John Trey Kirkland uh, friendly is that the defense is playing a lot of soft zone. Okay, and John Trey, as a high football IQ player, he's going up against a linebacker here in Antoine Sampa. He's really good at sitting at pockets in the zone. Now, he made more catches than just that, but look at this. He's really got a really good route sitting in, in, in zone uh, like that. So, yes, it was a really good performance, but this is not a normal defense. So, don't get too carried away with John Trey. It's, it doesn't mean that he is a for sure answer in the slot, but he really helped his case, and, you know, I'm not going to say this just based on this game alone. He he made a strong case to be the starting slot receiver. So we move on to here to uh, the next play in this drive. Alex Adams. Good catch. Good throw underneath by TJ. We move along. It's good to have Stingley and Ricks coming back next season. There's Sting. Loving the new hairstyle. First and 10. So we get two first downs here. And TJ is such a better quarterback when they're throwing on first down. Once again, this is a linebacker he's handing the football off to. All right. Let's see. This is really well blocked. <sighs> Eric Taylor is the one that actually makes his play. And he's actually a defensive tackle playing end here. That's a really good play. I would have been seven or eight yards. Did a good job working back inside. So it's not a bad first down run. A, a better running back would have gotten four or five yards there. It's second and seven. Bad throw. That's just a bad throw. Makes a good read. Uh, T.J. Finley brought this up in his interview with Emily Dixon. You know, I'm not a quarterback techni technician. I'm not J.T.L. Sullivan or uh, a Palmer. I, I, I just don't. But this is just... T.J. was talking about using his arm and not trusting his mechanics. Just not good mechanics. And you'll see this ball just get away from him. Wide open. This is Jack Mashburn. Okay. Your better, uh, your better receivers, you can kind of throw the football behind them and it'd be okay. But you got to put this ball on the money. I mean, he's wide open. We got a good run, and look at where this ball is. I mean, that's just, that's just really bad. That's really bad. That's all there is to it. That's just really, really, really bad. And you know, I love TJ, but I mean, and. and I hate being hard on any LSU player. I really do, because I love this team so freaking much. But I mean, that's just that's just bad. I mean, that we your second year. 
I mean, you just, just got to do better. You just got to be better. So that's third and seven. So he makes a, a second down mistake, and then that mistake, it's probably in his head. I missed a wide open guy. So in third down, what do I do? I play with sloppier mechanics. I throw off my back leg, even though my pass protection is really good. He's trying to fit this ball into Deion Smith. Ugh, there's just nothing there. There's nothing there. So, let's see. Good swim move here, though, by Roy. Late. Pass protection was okay. So if you see him coming this way, mm, it's not a good day for Cam Wire. Even though he didn't play much left tackle, we get a chip here. But it actually kind of helps the 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 twist, and it gets Cam off off balance. I mean, if you're TJ and you see all these guys sinking back, and there's just nothing there, what you have to do is work to your check down. Now, once again, this is a linebacker playing running back, and he could have done a better job waving his arm up. Hey, I'm open. I'm your check down. But TJ had already made this decision. To make this throw, and it's just not there. It's just not there. Just throw it away, take a sack. You just can't do that. Just can't do it. I just hate it. I hate it for him. So here we go. Max Johnson, extended red zone again. We let, Let's score a touchdown. All right, play action. I don't remember this play. Good coverage by McLaughlin. See, I mean, I, it's so... Probably check down to Cole Taylor there on first down. Tries to get a deep shot. It's just not there. Good coverage. Let's go to second and ten. We're in this pistol. Let's see it. This is what they've been doing on second down. They've been stemming their defensive end to help guard this B gap. Let's see if we do it again. We don't. At least I think we don't. All right, so they decide to not do it, so let's throw. It's on Daculus. This is This was just... Good God. I was giving the starting offensive line praise. They they get whipped across the board here. Rosenthal had a really good day on BJ. But goodness gracious, Sony Fanua. The spin move on Deculus and Neil Farrell putting Ed Ingram on his butt. It doesn't matter if Tom Brady's back there or Patrick Mahomes. That is just bad. Wow. And Deculus knows it. Just a filthy swim move. So this is just excellent from Fanua, who he knows from playing from also. Deculus is not the fleetest of foot, so Deculus to overcompensate, going up against a smaller guy, is going to you know step out here, which could open himself up to a, a spin move to the inside. Fanua does it perfectly. Ed Ingram, uh, um, completely opposite of him, is just getting blown out. That is what I'm talking about. Andre Carter, you got some animals, man. And on second watch, uh, Joseph Evans had a far better game than I initially thought. So that's just bad pass protection here. Which sets us up on third and 18. Okay? Was there anywhere you could have thrown underneath, maybe? No, it was all deep patterns. Nothing you could do. Bad protection. Bad protection. Third and 18.
good protection this time. That was a good bat down. So that's the red hat. So for those that don't know, the red hat is the person that decides, uh, is your television coordinator. He's the guy that decides when play stops for commercials and when play can resume for commercials. He is the most powerful man on the field. He could stop, you know, any dead ball situation and say there's a TV timeout. All right. So this is something that needs to change. Um, okay. And this is kind of what we talked about earlier. If it's third and a mile, all right, you know, and, and Max did this in a film study piece from our Texas A&M. You got to hit your check down. You never know. The defender might do something absolutely crazy, such as tackle the guy and throw the shoe down 30 yards down the field, and you get an automatic first down. But that is just something crazy. That would never happen, right? Hey. <laughs> so, yeah, the right thing here to do is hit your check down. And, look, once again, you hit your check down, something crazy might happen. You make it a more reasonable field goal as well. Um, or, you know, you hit one of these guys in stride, you can make it a, a manageable fourth down. Uh, but it said we're still trying to throw the football deep when it's not there. So just hit your check down. And that's essentially what he's probably being told in his headset. Trey Palmer not playing. All right, let's see. First down and... TJ gets this one play in, and then it's the Garrett Nussmeyer show. Once again, John Trey just sits in the zone, moves the chain. So, Shh, bugs asleep, but um, yeah, I'm editing or doing minor edits to the film study um, because I can't monetize these things. Uh, if you can. Drop a super chat, Venmo, Cash App. It'll be appreciated. Once again, live streams. You guys know all that stuff, so shh, shh. All right, let's take a look at Nuss. Let's go. So here we go. Uh, let's first down run. Once again, this is a linebacker playing running back. I keep saying that because, you know, come on. Good first down run, though. Or that got us a first down. So now it's first down. So... Once again, this is a seems to be a staple. This pre-snap stems uh, to prevent runs to the inside. Good first down throw. Good tackle by Sampa. Good job by John Trey sitting in that pocket. Good job, Nuss. So now it's second and four. Let's keep it moving. I think we're having chicken wings tonight. I'm excited. Small little burp. Good job. TJ can learn a thing or two from this. Throw it away if nothing's there. All right, third and four. All right, so. Hmm. Good stuff. Good ride by Devonta Lee. We're moving the chains. First and ten. Good throw. Positive yardage. Good tackle by Josh White. Second and eight. Complete. At least it's not a pick. Ooh. 
predetermining where you go with the football. Okay? Look at who's wide open. All right? This is something I think LSU's going to need to do a better job of. We got to take more shots. Okay? So, pre-snap, you're thinking the safety is helping over the top, but instead the safety actually comes down on this crosser here from John Trey, but notice we get man coverage going up against Darren Evans. It's Alex Adams, who we've seen a lot in spring scrimmage. He beats him, okay? So the, uh, the way it's taught to quarterbacks, okay, is that if at this point, if the wide receiver and the running backs or the wide receiver and the corner are even, at this point, if they're even, you throw it. Because that means the wide receiver is going to beat this defensive back in the situation more often than not, unless that's, you know, Champ Bailey or Patrick Peterson. And he does. And thus has the arm talent to throw this football over the top. And the safety was right there. Okay? Once again, he's a true freshman quarterback. I defend true freshman quarterbacks. They're not ready to play in year one. But we had it. We had it. It's a missed touchdown opportunity. And, you know, this is kind of like along the lines of, of, of you know, you want to hit home runs in baseball, right? The analytics prove that. You also want to get the football down the field. Yes, the intermediate passing game is, op- is important, but especially knowing as a quarterback that John Trey has really been eaten over the middle and that safety is center field right here, you know it's going to be hard for that safety to get over all the way here. Once again, easier said than done, but we had it. So now it's third and eight. And I don't know how long this is. Uh, All right, so I want to spend a lot of time on this play right here. Okay? So this counted as a sack when it should have been a completion to Jack Mashburn. Okay? Uh, This is actually unlucky for the, the LSU pass protection. And very unlucky for Nuss because that would have been an incredible... First down completion, and this is a good play from Jaquil and Roy, but he would not have brought him down in an actual game situation. So what 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 happens here, and this is this never happens. So LSU is running a twist stunt, which is something they did a lot of, and you should do it in a four man front, where essentially this guy is attacking the tackle, and we're trying to get this defensive end looping over the top. And what happens here? is Cardell actually does the right thing here. He pushes, and look, we're sitting and we're, we're reading this twist, and Cardell actually pushes his guy, and it's supposed to get passed off to Dellinger, and Dellinger picks up this guy, and Cardell picks up this looper, which he does. But what happens here is Cardell gets such a good piece of Jaquil and Roy What should have happened is Dellinger, instead of sticking with this end, he should have picked up the twister, and Cardell would have been waiting for him. So Dellinger does a good job of actually washing this guy down, but, you know, he's a true freshman as well. you got to pick up this guy once that happens. And notice it knocks him off balance, and that's so tough to do, especially with the right guard that you just met a few weeks ago. And Cardell Thomas. So this looks like this is on Cardell Thomas, which it kind of sort of is. Um, but even then, Nuss steps up and sidesteps this. So in an actual game, Jaqueline Roy is not bringing down Garrett Nussmeyer here, and he evades this rush. So that, of course, is a, and, and this is one I was tweeting nonstop is that you can't evaluate a spring game. Instead of this being an incredible completion for a first down, which it would have been, you know, and you see Cardell, that's what's happening. And it looks like he's complaining, right? But 
you know, he has a reason to. It's on Dellinger. So that was one of the better plays Nussmeyer made. And that's the, you know, that's his biggest calling card. So now we get our first look at Miles Brennan. All right. Pass interference flag. But I still like the attitude that McLaughlin plays with. And look at Miles. And I said this in the live stream. Miles Brennan and his performance in the spring game, knowing how much he wanted to get out in front of fans and knowing how hungry he is to get out on the field and knowing how unfair his situation was, he likely would have played all of last season and had a phenomenal season and potentially had a chance to go to the NFL draft, he still might not even be the starter next season. But, you know, just his attitude, all the quarterbacking, you know, situations he's been in up to this point, you know, he was itching so badly, and he had to wait until the second quarter to show himself off. Um, I give him a lot of credit. I, I really do. I mean, he, this was such a good performance for him. And that's a good throw to Jure Jenkins. He and Miles have good rapport, too. Good throw underneath. So now we get second and six. I thought uh, Larisha Harris did a good job reporting on the sideline for this game. Even though it was kind of glitchy, I thought Tom Luganbill and I forgot the play-by-play -play guy's name. Kind of get away with one here. Uh, that's just such a good read by Sting. And he's picking that ball off against most guys. It reminds you of the Georgia interception he had against George Pickens. Sting is so good at reading this. I mean, just look at this. Look at this. Look at this. And this is a comeback route against one of the best receivers in the country. And the protection, that's not good from Jason Hines. It's not good. And at first thought, I thought Jason Hines had a good game. I mean, we, we this, this is not good. This is not good. And Glenn Logan is not known for his pass rushing capability. He is known for batting balls down at the line of scrimmage. This is giving up too much ground. This is a hold. This is a hold. Deculus getting beat. And this is, you know, once again, Ed Orgeron says he wants to be able to protect with five men. And this is Sony Fanua. This isn't this is our fourth string in at best. And we're giving up it's just not good. And Miles, you know. He has to telegraph. He doesn't have any time. And in a normal game, this dude is getting absolutely crushed. Bad protection. That's just better defense. And Kayshawn, I mean, if that's not Kayshawn, I mean, that ball is picked off. We've got to do better than that. We've got, Especially if Miles is your court. I mean, you've got to have protection. That's just bad. Good run. We'll pick up the first down here. Ooh, oh, I want to see this again. All right, first and ten. Better. Good protection. Sting gets beat. That's good. That's good offense. God, Keyshawn had a had a game. Let's see, um, actually, let me see. That's on Jay Ward. Uh, the more I look at this, all right, explosive plays. Okay, so. This is this is football IQ, all right? So we're in too high right here. Okay, too high safety. All right. I don't have the all 22. I can't really see this. But Let's see if we get another. Okay, we do get another angle. All right, it just depends on what the defensive call is. So it just depends on if Durante, if the call is to let Stingley be Stingley and then cover everyone else. But if K-Shot is the only receiver that's killing you, I would want safety help over the top at all times. Stingley just gets beat. Go to K-Shot. Good job by Jay Ward. 
And look, from this angle, you could tell, yes, you could tell Jay Ward is not being told to help Stingley on anything, which makes sense because Stingley's great. And that's just good job. The double pump here from, from Miles is just good. Okay. All right. So, good check down here. Good tackle by Flott. All right. So, he's coming down, Adam. And this is what we're looking for in the passing game. Can we get a running back that can catch? So, TDP makes this catch. This reminds me of a check down he had against Alabama in 2019. We need, we need you to make this guy miss. And I know he has a head start on you. But this is you versus him in the open field. So cut this way, do whatever, let's not get tackled by this guy. And he actually does a decent job getting some positive yardage. Still, second and eight, we move on. It was a good job checking down. And TDP, of course, playing a lot of snaps. Ooh, our guy's getting beat again up front. Okay, let's see what happens here. I just got to get a better piece of him. And Neil, Fer Neil Farrell needs to complete this play here. All right? Mm. Let me see. All right. That's just too much penetration. Swim move right there. TDP. Jared Small had a really good game. He was by far the best linebacker on the field. Third and eight. Okay. So, notice the running back goes in motion, and the linebacker doesn't go out with them. So what does this tell you? Zone coverage. So now, Jake Peets is resetting up the call. So here's the thing that I wanted to point out, and before I you know, move forward. So in an actual game, um, when you run a lot of empty sets, what a lot of defensive coordinators do is they put a lot of guys at the line of scrimmage. And the reason why that they do is because it makes it harder in five-man protection to know who's coming and to call out assignments. So the LSU offensive line has a leg up in this situation because – they know that all they have to worry about blocking are these four guys because LSU is not blitzing. And, you know, in actual games, you know, you would see a lot more exotic formations. So that's what makes it really hard to evaluate these guys is, number one, yes, they do practice every day against each other, but also, number two, you know, you, you get so many different looks uh, in, 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 in an actual game to where, you know, they're just playing simple two-man under and just simple defensive concepts. Good pass protection, and that's just a good play by McLaughlin. Drives down. Let's see. All right, let's see. There's a good play. Maybe hit Coy. This is a little stick route, option route. Maybe hit Coy right here. It was still covered. Just good coverage across the board. See if Kayshawn underneath on the... Maybe Kayshawn's a better option there. He was open. That's fourth and eight. Kick the field goal. All righty. So, you know, uh, we get to the second drive here. Jay Alter was his name. Uh, let's see. When you catch this ball, I mean, you got to go upfield immediately. And notice he stops. Good hustle by uh, Philip Webb to help make that play. So we get one yard there. So second and nine. All right.
Good throw, good catch from Deion Smith. Let's see. Ah, good stuff. All right. So Coy Moore gets a purple uniform, and now he's working with the twos. Soft zone. So once again, an empty. Normally, these defensive backs, you'll have at least one defensive back in in press coverage against this bunch formation. And the reason why you would is because that is such a difficult block out of empty for the tackle to reach out and get that guy, or he's unblocked. So that would be how you would normally look. And that's the interception. Uh, just threw it right to him, and he didn't see him. And a lot of people you know, said this in, a, in the live stream and, and whatnot. How do you not see this linebacker? Well, the game is just moving so much faster, uh, for especially for Garrett Nussmeyer. It's a true freshman. Locks on to John Trey Kirkland. It looks open. It's not. Sampa doesn't wear gloves, which concerns me. I'm always nervous when players don't wear gloves. But he makes the catchers, Blake Baker, and all the energy. I love it. And it's just a bad throw. It's one of the three interceptions that's, that Nussmeyer threw. He's a true freshman for a reason. Still, uh, overall, a good day for, for Nussmeyer. I know it's wild to say, well, Nussmeyer threw three interceptions. How was it a good day? Well, you saw just a minute ago he had his best play taken away from him because of the, the limitations of the spring game. So, let me move along here. Good job. Good job by this. All right. So here's something that, that would be very interesting to know, and I'm not Kev Falk. I'm not the running backs coach. But what's going to happen is, you know, if you're a running back and, and you're TDP and you don't bounce a lot, obviously the the right thing to do is always to just run and just run right in there, right? But what Clyde did a really good job of, and there's a risk in doing this, is if these guys are crashing inside every single time, including the defensive ends, stop and and, and just stop and read this and see if you could bounce it to the outside into the space. Now, it's a lot easier said than done here, but that's going to happen if you have carry over carry over carry and you mostly just run to where the play is designed for you to go to. But still, it's a good run to pick up some yards here on first down to pick up two yards. It's not the worst thing in the world. Let's see here, second and eight. Good job. That's good quarterbacking. Notice Miles going through the progressions here. Good pass protection. Good job. It's a lot better from Ingram. And notice he's going through his progressions. He's trying to see if these deep routes are open. And then eventually, Dre gets open. Wasn't the prettiest throw, but, you know, we get a completion, and it sets up third and short. Good stuff. That's really good stuff for Miles. Uh, I got something caught in my throat. If you watched the live stream, I ate that, that impossible Whopper. I love those things. Burger King, please sponsor me. <laughs> ah. Good play by Glenn Logan. Bats this down. I'm not even sure if that would have gotten through there. I know Miles is a cannon. And he's trying to get it inside... Would that have squeezed in? Maybe. Good job by Logan, though. Batting the ball down. Fourth and three. All right. Good. Good, good. So this is one of the few times that, you know, we had a linebacker or someone show blitz, but obviously Miles knew he wasn't blitzing. This is just good pre-snap recognition. 
our best player on offense, period, against a linebacker on an out route all day, all day. Good job, Miles. Uh, He's... (laughs) The more you watch Miles, the more you're like, okay, this guy is just a really, really good football player. Right. First and ten. And this time, TDP actually looks to see if... And it's the same thing from this side. You know... If you're a running back and you notice that this stuff is, is, there's nothing there, maybe bounce. Maybe bounce this way. Maybe. Okay? But the one thing is, and obviously, you know, you can't hit the quarterback. For Miles to be successful, and there's going to be a lot of TDP handoffs out of shotgun, one of LSU's least efficient plays last season, and you're going to see why in just a second, these handoffs... Because Miles Brennan has no threat to keep the ball on his uh, on on his own read, defenses were able to crash down so heavy on TDP, which makes it that much more difficult to go. And we actually get decent push here, but Jared Small again. I mean, this guy, look at how he feels. And this was actually Chasen Hines whiffing his guy here, and it's a this is a difficult block for him to make. To get to to get off this guy it was a good job by uh, by ninety not uh, Joseph Evans really good job sitting on this double team see how he sits and he he gets just enough of Shanahan and Hines to where Small look at how quickly Jared Small reads this causes Hines to whiff and look at this Phil that is what I'm talking about right there. Good job. And he's hype. You should be. Catholic high. Love it. At a BR. I'll tell you, Jared Small. You know, I was talking about him, and you, you would watch him this offseason in, in the spring drills, and you would think Josh White and Antoine Sampa would jump him. But no, Jared Small was first in line on a lot of those drills. Uh, Micah Baskerville not being there in the spring has allowed Jared Small to step in. Bug Strong wasn't healthy for this game. He had been running some with the ones. Jared Small steps in. Also, Mike Jones is not there. Jared Small steps in. So, Jared Small was better than Devon Clark by a pretty wide margin in this game. And Clark misses his tackle. That was a tough tackle to make. He's going up against a wide receiver. Good run and turn. He misses his tackle. They're small again. Tolls makes a play. Clark does a good job coming back and help clean it up. Steps up fourth and short here, and or third and short, and once again, this play, you guys know from past film studies how much I hate this play. I I don't know why LSU keeps trying to run this. Miles Brennan running out of shotgun is not it, it's not a, a good play. His handoffs and shotgun just aren't successful plays. And the reason why is because he has no threat of pulling it. So they know what's happening. They know that this handoff, and especially considering, you know, Miles said, hurry up, hurry up, let's hurry up. But because TDP's not behind him in pistol, we know if there's a handoff, he's going to be going this way. And this is the same exact set from the Missouri game and uh, Mississippi State game. And we've done film studies on both of these. And notice... These guys are able to crash off this edge and make plays, and we're not able to convert. And TDP is not the absolute best at pushing a pile forward on short yardage. Right? He was stopped against Texas A&M on short yardage. He was stopped against Alabama on short yardage. And some of that wasn't his fault, but still, it, 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 we don't get to see John Emery or Trey Bradford or anyone else. But still, and then we run this quarterback sneak, and I know what a lot of you are saying. Where was this against Missouri? And, of course, you can't tackle him. So, it's kind of weird. So, you run a quarterback sneak, which is fine. But now, guess what we're going to do? Okay, we're going to hurry up, go to the line of scrimmage. Ed Orgeron's looking looking at the fits. And guess what? We actually decide to do this the right way, all right? We don't line up tight. Okay, so let's go back to, 
to to this set right here. All right, TDP on short yardage. Okay, and I want you to notice the formation. So notice we're tight. This is John Trey Kirkland and an extra tight end. And whenever you do these tight formations, all it does is it brings extra guys that can sip in, uh, uh, slip in and make this play. So now, here's what Jake Peets decides to do. He says on first and goal, let's see what happens if we spread these guys out. And let's run TDP, because what LSU would do every time is tighten everyone. And you guys saw from the Missouri film study, I'll link it down below, and the Mississippi State film study, that you know, this would just never work in short yardage situations. So here we are. Uh, <laughs> we, uh, we get to this point, and look, we still give up penetration like a mug. Okay? We down block, leave this defensive end untouched, and this defensive end doesn't have to worry about Miles Brennan keeping this ball because Miles cannot run. So what Miles needs to do here is keep it and run it in for himself. Obviously, he's not going to do that. And you'll see here, we down block, we leave Sony Fanua unblocked. And actually, TDP, if he would have gone with the play, he would have probably ran this in, but he decides to cut back, go straight into Sony Fanua, ball comes loose. We, we just cannot run short yardage plays. Which is interesting. If he would have just... I don't know. Let's see. If he would have just gone that way, he probably would have had a shot. So this... Uh, I, I never understood this part of the broadcast. And I like Jim Nagy. And ironically, his microphone quality was was, was better. I didn't understand the NFL draft talk here. I, 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 it's whatever. So let's... Then just try our best to focus on the play. Throw it away. Live to see another down. Uh, okay. Pet peeve of mine right here. Um, I'm not a quarterback. I'm not a great quarterback evaluator, but hear me out on this. I think the best thing to do in this situation is to always step up in the pocket, especially if you're a pocket quarterback, because you're not that fast. You're not going to beat many guys to the edge. And what Sony Fanua does a really good job of here is Anthony Bradford, who's now in for Jason Hines on the first team, does a good job helping to get a piece of Fanua, and that's actually a block in the back. That should have been a penalty. So... Here's the thing if you're Miles Brennan. This defensive end has to contain covered. And notice how much ground you're giving up right here. So this is the line of scrimmage, okay? And in a foot race, you're not Garrett Nussmeyer, okay? You're not Joe Burrow. You can't get around this edge. But he does. But look at Fanua. He does a good job of forcing Miles Brennan all the way out here, okay? And that's actually a flag it looks like a flag was thrown for block in the back. So it was actually thrown. Okay? So that it, it was thrown. And we I remember I was like, "Wait, why was there why were they pushed back so far?" Uh we were more worried about where Jamar Chase is going in the draft, which we all know he was a top 10 pick. I I didn't understand the NFL draft talk here, but that's not here nor there. Okay. Still This is just good. Sony Fanua had a really good day. And it was called. So that's why it was second and whatever. So if you're Miles Brennan in this situation, you just want to step up. Don't worry about bouncing it here because look. And they always say red zone quarterbacking. And Max Johnson struggled with quarterbacking. And Miles Brennan struggled with quarterbacking in the red zone. And they are two clear-cut guys because look if he would have just sat in this pocket and just stepped up okay he's wide open he's wide open 
Jontre is catching an easy touchdown. Mm. Mm, mm, mm. So now it's second in a mile. All right. Good pitch and catch to make it more manageable third. See if there's something else. No, it's a right throw. All right. So now it's third and goal. Not bad. Oh, you see what happens here. Okay. So, unless you run something similar to the throw that Max Johnson missed earlier. Okay, so essentially what we're doing is we're trying to get Coy Moore on this wheel route here. And what makes it difficult is that they're in zone coverage. Okay. So, essentially, Dwight McLaughlin is sitting there waiting for this ball to be thrown. No, there are man coverage. So, this is a good job by Cordell Flott. Well done. No separation. He high points the football. That's really good stuff. Flott a little banged up on the play. Good coverage. Once again, I didn't understand the NFL draft talk. Uh, we then get to here. Okay. What's Jacoby? Nothing but the best. We move on here to Nuss. Okay, so I'm a little bit better with Nuss rolling out because that's just part of who he is as a quarterback. And, you know, different than Miles Brennan because, you know, he doesn't have the same level of speed. But what I want you to do is see, you know, there you go in a game. He's probably, eh, it's good stuff. Good pass rush lane discipline. We'll move on here to second and ten. Once again, this is my first rewatch, uh, and I'm just recording this uh, as we go. Good job. And you just got to catch that. Oh, I hit him right in the numbers. Come on, Jack Mashburn. I'm cheering for you, Jack. Dear Lord, this is elite quarterbacking. This is really good. Notice this time, he rolled out this time, it's always better to step up. And he steps up, sees Jack Mashburn over the middle, delivers a dart. You just got to catch it. And and Derek Davis Jr. did a good job getting in there. But if this is a decent, and I mean decent, uh, starter, we're getting a first down. And that's not that it gets Jack Mashburn, but I mean, you got to make that play. It's good stuff. It's good stuff. So, Nuss on first and second down. Avoids the sack on first down. Incompletion on second down. Let's see how he reacts here on third. Those are dart. Love this kid. You gotta love Nuss. Let's watch it again. Once again, John Trey Kirkland just finding open spaces. Good stuff. And then we get a fumble right here. But I want you to see this throw. Ooh. John Trey, his only mistake was right there. Derek Davis Jr., man on the spot. But once again, four plays. Four excellent turnouts here from Garrett Nussmeyer. Look at where this ball is placed. The safety read it. It was just so perfectly thrown. Look at the zip on that thing. I mean, good God. Look at this ball. Wow. Wow. That's special. That's special stuff right there. 
I mean it. Goodness. So the picks were bad. But Garrett's... And, and look at this. Look, 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 look at this. Look at this kid. After the fumble. Okay, this is a senior. John Trey, he's down on himself. Nussmeyer right there. Look at that. This is that this does not show up on the stat sheet. Picking him up. That's what I'm talking about. That's leadership right there. It's good stuff. Once again, uh we're more worried about talking about Mac Jones NFL draft stock, which just didn't get it. <laughs> it's Durante coaching up our guys. So Durante is on the sidelines. There we go. I thought I saw him down there. I didn't remember if he was in the booth or not. Garrett Nussmeyer. Once again, the stat line was unfair to him. The picks were bad, but earlier he wasn't really sacked, and then, man. Miles, good flat throw here to TDP. Good stuff. I, I, once again, I just didn't get LSU fans. I'm not so sure if we care about Mac Jones's draft stock. I I do. I like the NFL draft, but not during the LSU spring. I just did not. I can understand the second half talking about it, but I don't know. What do I know? I just spilled water on me. Uh, I got something caught in my throat. <sighs> mm. Oh, I didn't sound pleasant. That's a dropped interception. It's either that or pass interference. I mean, look. Was he brought down? I don't know. It's tough to see. Still not a smart throw. Just hit John Trey right here. But Miles trying to drive the football down the field. Either way, you got to pick that off. If you're Jordan Tolls. Not good. It was a good job by Miles to pick it up and run. Sony Fanua again. Good dip underneath Deculus. Bradford. Uh, let's see. Oh, it was a loop. The defensive tackle stunted. And this would have been a sack. And we did not do a good job passing this off. See? So what what this does is this defensive tackle takes up these blocks and it's Anthony Bradford that needs to pick up this rusher here. He doesn't. And it would have been a sack. Not good protection. Let's see, Ed Orgeron... Fourth and one. We pick up the first down. Go to Je go to Jure. Good. Once again, Max Reedon. It's the same play that they did earlier to Kayshawn. Find a running back going up against a linebacker, and let's just throw in that little space. And that's what we do. Pick up the chains. Fourth and one. Fake spike. And honestly, th this is just a good play by Kayshawn. And McGlather knows it. I like I love that attitude for Miles. McGlather's in position to make this play. And the fake spike. And look, I mean, look, he's over the top of him. 
It's just look at this play by Kayshawn. Hands, all hands too. Just gets right over him. And look at how and, and look at how Kayshawn does a great job, and you'll see what he does here. Notice how he gets inside McLaughlin's body. It sounds so weird. But still, he high points the football. He shields him from it. That's just a heck of a play. And he pops right up. This kid is ridiculous. He's absolutely ridiculous. And the pass protection because of the fake spike is good. Miles does a good job giving Kayshawn the opportunity. I don't know if I feel safe throwing that ball to anyone else other than Kayshawn. Because McLaughlin was there to make the play. And that's halftime. So that's the first half. Uh, if you would like to see the second half, let me know. Whew. Uh, yeah, so mixed bag from, uh, from all the quarterbacks. But that was a lot of fun to go back and go through it. Once again, like we said, you know, a lot of five-man protection. So we didn't really get to see... Um, the LSU pass protection against different blitzes and how quarterbacks react to different blitzes, plus they couldn't get hit, all that stuff. But there you go. It is Power Hour LSU. Boom. I have no voice.